electro microscopic resistance. All different methods which can be used. Uh, I think that we will have some questions, but we will keep them for the end of, of the presentation part. And uh, uh, now I give my microphone back to Aurelio. Thank you, Alex. So our next speakers are uh, Fiorella Calabrese and Cristina Basso. Uh, they will talk, as we said, about the pulmonary and the cardiovascular pathology in COVID-19. They are very well known. They are very active in the ESP, also at the international level. So I'm not going to say anything about it. just one word about their department. You know, that's the cardiothoracic and vascular sciences department at the University of Padua, Università di Padova. And, and that's a department of great achievers led by the wise hand of Professor Gaetano Tiene. And it is very inspiring to see how that university has given a very modern content to the glorious tradition of people such as Vesalius, uh, William Harvey, Morgagni, uh, Fabrizio Acquapendente, uh, you name them, you know, follow up, you, you can see their avenues and streets all over Padua. Uh, and they were all very intimately related to uh, the University of Padua. So in this afternoon, we'll have a taste of that. And I will leave you now with Fiorella to talk about uh, pulmonary pathology. Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, before, thanks Aurelio for kind introduction. Uh, before starting, let me first uh, thank uh, the president, the ESP president, the general director, and the whole the ESP board for organizing this very interesting uh, webinar and uh, for inviting me, for inviting us uh, to talk about our experience on pulmonary and cardiovascular pathology. So in uh, this uh, few minutes, uh, I'll uh, briefly, uh, shortly uh, focusing on uh, first what we have read and what we are learning. And uh, then I'll briefly mention some uh, uh, ESP initiatives, important initiatives coming from pulmonary pathology working group and uh, key priorities for COVID-19 research by pulmonary pathologists. So uh, what uh, we have, uh, uh, we have read, not uh, so many articles on uh, pathology and the COVID-19. Uh, from February to June, using uh, the keywords in PubMed, uh, histology, uh, uh, cytology, or electromicroscopy, or autopsy, uh, we have uh, uh, not so many articles uh, published on uh, academic journals, uh, approximately 50. Uh, concerning all organs and uh, um, no more than uh, 30 for lung pathology. But uh, why uh, so uh, few papers on pulmonary pathology? A plausible explanation, sadness of how vast patients' volume in hospitals, uh, shortage of healthcare personnel, high rate of transmission, all this uh, has made invasive diagnostic procedure as uh, uh, surgical biopsy, uh, core biopsy, uh, cytological sampling, less of a, a clinical priority. But also uh, lack of uh, autopsy. Um, several um, healthy um, uh, authorities, uh, Italian Minister of Health, Royal College of Pathologists, um, make uh, discouraging uh, uh, guidelines uh, for performing autopsy in COVID-19 disease patients. Uh, this uh, preventive measure um, were at that time uh, maybe uh, excessive but uh, useful to control and manage uh, viral infections. Uh, so pulmonary pathology, data on pulmonary pathology changes are scarce, even more or less data coming from in vivo studies. These are the only studies published uh, in in vivo uh, 
um, they report the pulmonary pathology uh, studied in peritumoral surgical spacement. In other words, in patients who underwent lung resection for uh, lung cancer and uh, then retrospectively found that we have had uh, COVID-19 pneumonia. So the first uh, uh, studies coming from uh, Chinese uh, group, they report two cases, and uh, the uh, authors uh, uh, describe uh, only the presence of acute lung injury. In other words, the presence of uh, intralateral fibrin, high membranes, uh, reactive nemocytes. The authors also report intralveral secretion with feature of uh, amylase bodies, but for pulmonary pathologies, this is an specific finding. So then, uh, 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 in Italian groups, Julia Damatis group reported an experience on uh, uh, patients who underwent lung cancer resection, and uh, but the authors uh, uh, clearly described no uh, clear-cut evidence of diffuse alveolar damage. They only report the presence of uh, uh, false eye of alveolar morish, uh, organized pneumonia, neutrophilic margination. And the, interestingly, the authors highlighted the conclusion that uh, this finding should, uh, at this time, carefully investigated, uh, in particular when we have such clinical stigma of patients. And uh, just uh, to promptly uh, prescribe a pharyngeal swab PCR to rule out the possibility of SARS-CoV-2 infection in palsy or asymptomatic patients. Uh, recently, um, a paper uh, a few weeks ago was published concerning the evaluation of uh, um, pathological changes in patients who underwent benign uh, lung lesions. And again, it was clearly highlighted, uh, no clear cut of diffuse alveolar damage. Only uh, uh, foci of uh, alveolar hemorrhage, fibrin, and the more of perivascular inflammatory infiltration. This uh, uh, is uh, our first experience uh, occurred a few weeks ago uh, in Padua. Uh, the patient was uh, is a 71 year old man uh, who underwent the right upper lobe uh, uh, surgery for adenocarcinoma. The patient had uh, a mild COVID-19 pneumonia with uh, three uh, SARS-CoV-2 nasopharyngeal swab, uh, two positive and one negative. And the time of surgery the patients had a high level of IgG. The uh, macroscopy, as you, you see, uh, showed uh, several areas of uh, um, consolidation and uh, moreover uh, areas of pleural thickening. At histology, we detected several histological lesions, parenchymal changes characterized by organized pneumonia, uh, lymphomonocytic infiltration, and moreover, the presence of reactive pneumocytes with syncytial feature and basophilic inclusion, quite reminiscent of viral infections. But we detected also several other lesions, uh, inflammation of pleural, perivascular infiltration, neutrophilic margination, capillaritis, and also at electron microscopy, we uh, detected the presence of uh, severe endothelial changes characterized by, sorry, by uh, retublication of a basal membrane and uh, significant vocalization of the intracytoplasmic vocalization of the endothelial cells. Um, but what uh, we have uh, read from post-mortem, the first studies uh, coming from uh, uh, post-mortem core biopsies from uh, Chinese experience, uh, and uh, both uh, these studies uh, have uh, uh, reported only the presence of uh, uh, diffuse alveolar damage and uh, organized pneumonia, reactive pneumocytes in uh, the um, the second study, the authors were able to identify the presence of uh, SARS-CoV-2 by using uh, immunohistochemistry in uh, type 2 neonocytes. So, but surely more informative uh, have been the studies coming from uh, complete uh, autopsies. Uh, 
From February to June, uh, 26 uh, papers have been published, six from Chinese, uh, Japanese, 10 from uh, USA and 10 from Europe. Uh, in total, 144 cases. So what the first studies uh, reported? Um, these uh, were the first published uh, studies coming from Chinese uh, uh, researchers, uh, both uh, uh, um, studying complete autopsies, and in both studies, again, the only histological findings was uh, acute subacute lung injury in the uh, study by all uh, the, uh, the researchers were able to identify a viral particle by using both immunohistochemistry and uh, electron microscopy in uh, bronchial epithelial cells and type 2 uh, lymphocytes. So what uh, we have read in the first uh, in the first two months, February and March, um, the principal pathological signs described at uh, basis of uh, COVID-19 pneumonia was uh, mainly acute subacute lung injury. In other words, uh, the principal the, uh, pathological findings of uh, clinical acute respiratory distress at that time, uh, the severe form of COVID-19 was, uh, uh, was characterized by uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome. Uh, so a lot has changed uh, since uh, March. Um, the, uh, this uh, thanks uh, a, a large number of autopsy performed in uh, several countries in Europe and the USA. Um, and this because despite discouraging recommendations of health authorities, uh, specific guidelines for patient management in different settings, including post-mortem examination, were provided in, uh, in agreement with WHO. So uh, the Center for Disease Control and the scientific societies and uh, several uh, pathologists, the European and uh, American pathologists started performing uh, autopsies in keeping with uh, this uh, uh, guideline uh, using uh, 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 a, a specific protocols, uh, using a biosafety level three autopsy, using specific equipment. In Padua, we started in March 23rd, uh, and uh, from uh, that to now, we have performed 27 autopsy, thanks to great collaborations of uh, three pathologists and two dedicated technicians. So what uh, we have uh, uh, learned from uh, this uh, uh, autopsies, from these studies, uh, the these uh, were the largest case uh, uh, studies uh, published in, uh, in the uh, literature uh, reporting, sorry, uh, reporting uh, uh, the experience of Swiss and German groups. Uh, the authors, along the acute lung injury, uh, described several changes involving vascular bed from uh, capillarostasis, neutrophilic margination, and the thrombosis of uh, uh, um, small and large airways. Um, the, uh, uh, more recently, uh, the Italian groups uh, confirmed the presence of platelet fibrin thrombi in a, a larger case series, 38 cases. And uh, uh, anyway, as I previously mentioned, the uh, changes, the alterations in the vascular bed just started from capillaries uh, and the uh, Capillary at the capillary level, we can see simple capillaries. This is we can see neutrophilic margination, but we can see also the most severe form of, uh, of capillaritis, neutrophilic capillaritis. That sometimes may be associated with the complement deposition, as uh, demonstrated by Cinzia Madre. This uh, was uh, already mentioned. This is a, a great paper uh, recently published. The authors uh, uh, identify the presence of uh, uh, several vascular changes in comparison to other 
another severe form of pneumonia related to influenza virus. And the authors detected in COVID-19 pneumonia a more significant endotelitis, more significant thrombosis, and moreover, the overexpression of gene related to angiogenesis, and the specific form of angiogenesis, the so-called intussusceptive angiogenesis. The authors uh, also uh, detect the putative uh, uh, um, viral particle in endothelial cells, uh, as uh, uh, previously also described by uh, Susanna Varga. Um, so the, uh, uh, it's uh, not easy to, as uh, uh, was already highlighted, to clearly identify viral particles in uh, at electron microscopy. We have, especially in autopsy material, uh, several uh, mimickers. But uh, I think pathologists could have uh, uh, ancillary tools uh, to uh, overcome, even if not easy, to overcome this uh, task. Anyway. A direct insult could be not an unexpected finding because, as previously mentioned, viral receptors, in particular uh, angiotensin converting enzyme 2, are also present in endothelial cells, as it was uh, demonstrated several years ago, 2000 K by Lee, by using several technologies. And the, the involvement of endothelial cells could explain multi organ damage in COVID 19. Uh, anyway, whatever is uh, the trigger, uh, viral or immunological mediated insult, endothelial changes are often present. Uh, this is uh, a case coming from our uh, autopsy case series, uh, concerns a male of 86 years uh, with uh, one of the most known comorbidity hypertension. The patients have a very short uh, uh, disease, only uh, um, 10 days. And uh, uh, at autopsy, the uh, lung show the typical marbled feature. At histology, we uh, detected the only foci of alveolar language, mainly in the lower lobe. The most significant pathological changes involve the vascular band, with feature of neutrophilic uh, margination, uh, capillaritis, microthrombosis of small and medium size. And the electron microscopy, we detected the several uh, changes with endothelial swelling, uh, basal membrane retublication, and uh, vocalization, significant vocalization. These lesions are not specific for, uh, for biases because we can detect that related to other pathological processes, for example, in immunomediated process. For example, in uh, lung antibody mediated rejection, we can see. Uh, similar lesion as uh, uh, clearly described by Anya Roden uh, two years ago. Uh, as you see, uh, the, um, the authors described approximately the same lesion, reduplication, basal membrane reduplication, swollen of endothelial cells, and the vocalization of uh, uh, endothelia. So, but uh, what other lesions we can see uh, at autopsy? Uh, uh, we can uh, frequently detect uh, the uh, large and the small highway inflammation. In um, we can see ulcerative tracheitis also in non-intubated patients. We can see chronic and mixed inflammatory infiltration of large and the small airways, sometimes with mucostasis. We can see pleural inflammation, significant pleural inflammation. In more than half of our patients at uh, autopsy, we detect the pleural effusion. And the cytological examination of the cytoblock detected significant atypia of mesothelial cells, sometimes with reactive uh, uh, syncytial features, and the both samples were positive at PCR analysis for uh, SARS-CoV-19. So, but to detect all this lesion is extremely important. I would like to say mandatory to uh, evaluate, to examine uh, the lung uh, uh, with extensive sampling, generous sampling. Uh, in Padua, we have adopted a, a, a protocol we are using for explant lung. After 72 hours of fixation, uh, we perform at least three samples for uh, uh, lobe. Uh, 
uh, to at the higher structure. And obviously, if we detect some microscopic uh, uh, area, uh, pathological area, this is sampled. So in total, we usually uh, examine uh, at least 70, 20 uh, slides per case. During the autopsy, we perform uh, a sampling of a small fragments immediately fixed in glutaral uh, um, dye for electron microscopy or RNA later solution for uh, biobanking. So, in summary, what uh, we have learned and what we are learning. So we, we now know that the pathological substrate of COVID-19 pneumonia is more complex, not only acute subacute lung injury, that often is a focal, not diffuse. We can see more significant vascular bad changes starting from capillary to uh, small, uh, large vessels. Uh, we can see frequently uh, a significant inflammation of large and small airway, significant inflammation of pleura, and uh, interstitial thickness sustained by chronic inflammation and uh, young collagen deposition with feature of organized movement. But we have never uh, seen established fibrosis, even in patients that have a longer disease duration. But in, in Padua, a multidisciplinary team is now uh, following uh, the patient uh, especially patients that recovered after severe disease, just to see if they develop a, 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 a remodeling lung parenchyma. So what can we say? We can uh, distinguish a, a timeline of our knowledge. At, in the first two months, we believe that the only pathological substrate of COVID-19 pneumonia was acute lung injury. After March, we uh, uh, detected several other lesions along the vascular, acute vascular lesion. So, and let me provocatively say that uh, uh, pathologists have uh, uh, given a great contribution to this uh, step forward of our knowledge to support what the clinicians, several clinician pulmonologists, expert pulmonologists uh, already have noted. They uh, recently realized that the disease is not acute respiratory distress syndrome. The disease is uh, characterized by discrepancy between uh, severe hypoxemia and the normal ventilation rate. They, they detected a significant coagulopathy. They detected a, a, the important important immunoinflammation, the so-called cytokine storm. So uh, some initiative uh, coming from a pulmonary pathology working group. Uh, so in, uh, in uh, March, uh, uh, when uh, in Italy we, we had uh, a high peak of morbidity and mortality. I received many emails of closeness and affection uh, from members of the ESP Pulmonary Pathology Working Group. I would like to take this uh, opportunity to thank uh, again, uh, once again, all of them. And uh, in my uh, reply, I've uh, uh, tried to encourage them uh, and uh, to improve the, our resilience. Moreover, don't forget our primary mission that is uh, that to develop an important network among pulmonary pathologists and moreover develop an important initiative that could improve our knowledge in this field. And we started immediately sharing cases. Uh, and uh, this uh, in advance, I would like to show uh, the first our product. The, this is a, a a, a recent uh, um, review article uh, that uh, many uh, pathologists coming from different countries that have experienced an important COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, from Spain, from France, from uh, Russia, from Netherlands. Um, have carefully uh, made a revision of 23 articles published uh, until uh, May 27. And we have uh, uh, 
described several histological lesions, uh, distinct, uh, um, distinguishing the different anatomic compartments along uh, several clinical data. Uh, based on uh, their experience and uh, expertise, each pathologist oversaw the drafting of uh, different paragraphs of, uh, of RAIN. So what other initiatives coming from uh, uh, pulmonary pathology working group? Um, this uh, was uh, recently uh, proposed by Paul Hoffman, the next the incoming chair of pulmonary pathology working group. Um, the proposal aimed to collect information on the influence of the COVID-19 pandemic in our laboratories. A five-page European survey was sent to all members and uh, we received uh, more than 50 replies. Uh, we are so happy for that. We are waiting for only two or three countries uh, from Estonia, Denmark and Norway. The results of survey will start to draft as soon as possible a manuscript involving all participants. Why it is important, this project, uh, to show to other parts of the world what is uh, the current situation in our laboratory in uh, Europe. So uh, what are the key priorities? Uh, I mentioned only some key topics to first explore, but uh, first of all, I would like again a remark how important is uh, collaboration. Collaboration among pathologists, expert pathologists, but also collaboration with all specialists involved in the patient management and diagnosis and care. So what are the key topics to first explore? Endothelial cells. Endothelia is often injured, is directly injured by viruses or is immunomitated. This is extremely important, moreover, for future treatment. Uh, uh, tissue inflammatory burden, a cytokine characterization. We know that the disease is uh, characterized by huge cytokine storm. So, but which uh, cytokine is mainly involved in the tissue damage? The contribution of lung uh, superimposed or concomitant lesion. At the autopsy, we detected uh, several infections, several neoplasia, some of them also unknown before autopsy. So, uh, what is the, 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 what this lesion can influence on the uh, fatal outcome of patients? And finally, and last but not least, the clinical pathological correlations. It's extremely important for us to correlate all pathological findings with clinical data, also by using sophisticated biostatistical analysis, machine learning, just to identify if can exist some specific cluster, some specific phenotype to differently manage. And uh, I'm uh, involved in several of this uh, research uh, project. And uh, for that, let me thank uh, all uh, Padova COVID pulmonary working group in, uh, in the spy code of, uh, of this. Uh, you can see only the name of uh, each uh, specialty, but uh, numerous, really numerous uh, young uh, researchers are collaborating in this uh, project with great enthusiasm. And uh, let me thank uh, my collaborators, my team, and all pathology unit, biologists, and all technicians that in the last month were almost full-time involved in this difficult task. And thank you for following me and uh, uh, for joining this webinar.